In this video, we are going to discuss uh, measuring the cost of living through the CPI and the problems with our measurement. Just like with any tool, uh, even if it's being used appropriately, there are certain limitations um, to each of these instruments. We're going to discuss the ones of the CPI here. Economists have identified three problems with the CPI that leads uh, the CPI to overstate inflation, meaning that it is measuring more inflation than households are experiencing. These are substitution bias, unmeasured quality change, and introduction of new goods. In this video, I will discuss the first two. Let's start with an example. This active learning exercise is also on Top Hat. Please take a minute. Pause this video after the explanation and submit your answers through Top Hat. So in this problem, we're going to define the CPI basket of goods as 10 pounds of beef and 20 pounds of chicken. Here on this table on the right, you also have the data on the prices of beef and chicken and the respective cost of the CPI basket in 2014, 15, and 16. I want to remind you that we care about the base year, and in this case, the base year is 2014. Now, according to the scenario, in 2014 and 2015, households bought the CPI basket, but in 2016, households bought a different combination of chicken and beef. As you would have noticed up here on the top, the prices of beef increased significantly more than the prices of chicken from 2015 to 2016. So households changed their behavior by buying a different combination of beef and chicken. So for this exercise, what I would like you to do is I would like you to compute the cost of the 2016 household basket, meaning what they actually bought. And then I want you to compute the percentage increase in the cost of the household basket. Um, what I mean by that is what households actually bought. And then compare it to the CPI uh, inflation rate that we calculated in the previous video. If you need a reminder of how to do that, please uh, go ahead and review it now. All right to compute the cost of the 2016 household basket. What we're going to do is take the prices from our table. It's for beef. This is for chicken, respectively. And then we're going to take the numbers for how much beef households bought, how much chicken households bought. That gives us a total expenditure of $195 for the 2016 household basket. To calculate the percentage increase in the cost of the household basket over 2015 and 2016, we have to first uh, calculate the cost of the basket in 2015. Now, according to the scenario, households bought the CPI basket in 2015. So we can just look at this value right there and use that to compare to the um, cost of the household basket in 2016. So using our percentage change formula, and here times 100, we find that the cost of the basket that households actually purchase increased by 30%. From the previous video where we calculated how much the inflation rate was as measured by the CPI, we can see that the CPI uh, measured a 40% increase in the cost of living. So this is what we mean when we say that the CPI overstates uh, inflation. Real inflation, what households experience, is 30%. But what was measured by our instrument was 40%. And because what is measured is bigger than what actually happened, we say that our measure CPI overstates inflation.
Now let's talk about the second problem on measure quality change. When the first iPhone came out, it started the category that we now know of as smartphones. Now let's suppose that the BLS uh, defined the smartphone category, um, basing it on the iPhone. Now, if that is true, both of these would qualify as smartphones. So let's think about how what we define as a smartphone uh, has changed in price over time and what that means for our measurement of inflation. The original iPhone came out with a sticker price of $500. This new iPhone came out recently with a price tag of $1,200. So if both of these are defined as a smartphone, then by comparing this one item on the basket of goods over time, we would say that there's been a very sharp increase in the price of smartphones. In this case, more than doubled. But is that actually true? So let's think about the quality of the smartphones that consumers are purchasing. And just for sake of this example, let's suppose that the new iPhone is 10 times better than the original iPhone. So that in terms of quality, defined as one unit of quality, equals an original iPhone, then what we could say is that the new iPhone is 10 times the quality or 10 times the smartphone as an original iPhone. So let's think about the price of each of these. If we are de defining the price as per unit of quality, then the original smartphone here, the iPhone, um, would be $500 per unit of quality. If we do the operation by dividing the cost and adjusting it for the quality, we would get that the price per unit of quality for the new iPhone is $120. So if we adjust for the quality of this product improving over time, what we see is the opposite of what we concluded previously. The iPhone is in fact getting cheaper and is getting cheaper because it's getting better. And the services and products that we actually get from that iPhone is so much better than the original than if we're just looking at the category smartphones without accounting for the change in quality, we would be overstating inflation. Again, overstating means that what the CPI measures is greater than what households experience. Before we finish this lecture, let's use the CPI for a real world problem you're likely to encounter in the near future. Now, suppose that you're deciding what job offer to accept after your college graduation. Now, each job offer pays the same $60,000 a year. Now, what I want you to do is use the CPI uh, for each metropolitan area found here on the left table to answer questions on top hat. I want to remind you that what matters for your consumption is your purchasing power and not your income. Because prices are different across the nation, what matters is how much you can buy with those dollars. So for example, let's suppose that you live in San Diego. If you live in San Diego, the purchasing power of $60,000 is equal to $60,000 divided 
by the value of the CPI in San Diego. That gives you a rough measure of how many baskets of goods and services you can afford when living there. That is approximately 200 baskets of goods. Now it's not exactly that, but you get the idea. Now what you can do is you can compare the purchasing power across different metropolitan areas and the amount of income being offered in each of them uh, to see which one is better in terms of purchasing power. Now obviously there is a lot more to choosing where to live than your purchasing power, but that ought to be one of the major uh, characteristics that you look for in a new city.